as we all uh, enjoy this phase of new normal we are successfully able to combat the two waves of covid-19 there is a third wave which is predicted but the government and the public is much more prepared to adapt to the demands of change of course as healthcare professionals and physical therapists it's our responsibility to make sure that patients uh, have discontinued physical therapy during the lockdown and because of economical or because of uh, health concerns they could not continue with any kind of a rehab program so when it comes to the leading cause for a visit to a physical therapist in an outpatient scenario the most important condition and most commonly recognized condition although only as a symptom it means we tell the word low back pain the pain is just a symptom okay it's just the region of pain low back the area between the rib cage and the pelvis okay so that's the region uh, where the pain is so we determine and just name it as low back pain low back pain is not a diagnosis uh, it is just a clinical presentation and it is a symptom that is reported by the patient okay so it's very uh, when we talk about experts in the field of physical therapy many of them of course in every specialty there are people who are who can be experts but if you see the majority of the people they are orthopedic and under that manual therapist and of course in manual therapist it is the spine and when it comes to the spine the freedom to treat of course it is there in the thoracic spine uh, but the actual symptom focus and the functional problems come because of cervical and lumbar cervical affects the upper limb but it affects only activities which are like uh, the uh, what is called as the um, occupational activities of daily living okay so when you are working for example i have to write or i have to do type my upper limb activity is influenced by cervical spine i can be what is called as uh, i can do minimal activities even if my cervical spine fusion is done okay and if my i am not moving my upper limbs also still i can move around okay i can do lot of activities but the problem comes when lumbar spine there is a problem so that is like you are it restricts your activity to the largest extent and the lumbar spine which is with the low back pain when the subject is having an apprehension that am i having a serious disorder okay uh, these things will come the fear avoidance okay mostly that comes with low back pain more common than the neck pain and of course the lower limb if there is a weakness or symptoms you are not able to walk or you are walking uh, improperly you get tired um, you feel like you are uh, uh, endurance is poor definitely it will create a disability a perceived disability that i am not that active i am not that young okay so there is a lot of issues with the lumbar spine and low back pain is the leading cause manual therapy definitely it is the best option for mechanical and what is called as the uh, somatic dysfunctions of the lumbar spine including articular myofascial or the neural components uh, we have joint mobilizations we have the myofascial releases we have the neural mobilizations okay of course exercises is a big uh, picture um, the recent research confirms that both the things one is educational interventions and the other is aerobic exercises okay so they are all non specific they are not actually focusing on a particular muscle and then exercises okay in athletes of course in sports rehab already because we assume that they are fit their conditioning level is very good so we treat them in a structural or a muscle based exercise okay whereas in a sedentary individual it comes to the holistic part where the aerobic exercise is important than although if they have only piriform straightness or only hamstring tightness you should actually prescribe them aerobic exercises because uh, the fiber conversion okay from anaerobic or to aerobic if it happens automatically the endurance improves the functional endurance when we are entering into the post covid scenario 
when we are talking about pulmonary rehabilitation six minutes walk test you need the lumbar spine and lower limb as indirect measures to adapt to the altered pulmonary function okay so that we can walk uh, there may be lot of uh, metabolic or what is called as the histological compensation that can happen in lower quadrant and of course the visceral component is also there there is abdominal visceral structures um, vascular structures in lower limb lymphatic so they can influence uh, I am not telling that uh, they are out of the picture but when we talk about mechanical low back pain we talk about structures that influence functionally in terms of static and dynamic so that means in postures and also during movements and activities of course patients have constant pain also so we need to see that examination how it can be modified uh, all our testing should be in the direction of relief of symptoms okay what is relieving what is relieving what is relieving what is relieving if uh, flexion is aggravating means and the patient is having constant pain in history that means we need not examine flexion we can examine the extension okay and expect that the constant become pain becomes a lesser okay as you maintain the corrected position so similar aspects the evolution of thinking process over the period of time has developed that stability motor control uh, peter osalivan's contributions of control impairment and movement impairments julie fritz and her team for treatment based classification where we identify uh, groups subgroups like mobilization manipulation or stabilization uh, specific exercises traction and uh, of course the conditioning okay the pain and the conditioning group so you see that uh, various methods of reasoning is there now if you see low back pain mechanism based reasoning is also there where we have the nociceptive pain which is from the peripheral structures nociplastic pain is the um, or, uh, modified terminology for this central sensitization okay nociplastic pain because of plasticity and of course the third uh, and the fourth fifth symp sympathetic mediated pain the uh, cognitive affected with is the non organic pain as described by gordon wadal okay psychological psychosomatic low back pain and of course the neural the peripheral sensitization neurodynamic aspects of low back pain so it's not just the low back pain it is the impact that it has on the individual that is important uh, realizing this aompt of course it has been holding all the courses and developing new courses uh, it has been well received by participants all around the world uh, to name a few techniques which uh, under innovative and the recent advances in manual therapy aompt introduced these approaches for the past one year Um, the first and the foremost which was the ortho manual therapy myo manual therapy and neuro manual therapy the existing uh, innovative approaches of combining articular techniques into ortho manual uh, myo facial techniques into myo manual and neural mobilization neurodynamics into neuro manual okay, so that was the initial foundation then the later development came to ortho myo neuro manual therapy to improve the evaluation differentiation based examination and also treatments and the next of course don't forget mechanism based classification and then the manual therapy application and of course when you go further and further into the developments we had improvised the existing uh, manual therapy approaches and then extended it and made it better the mechanical diagnosis and therapy of robin mckenzie was functionally adapted Um, in the middle as mechano functional diagnosis and therapy and then further into uh, a totally different approach okay so i'm going to launch it shortly so it's a surprise and the next one is of course the myofascial release being improvised into facio muscular releases and further continuation when we see that um, when we enter into 2021 we improvise the cupping into therapeutic cupping Uh, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization into therapeutic iastm for physical therapy and of course visceral manipulative therapy okay so it's not visceral manipulation or visceral osteopathy okay craniosacral therapy it's not the cranial osteopathy okay 
So everything has been uh, integrated into physical therapy, the osteopathy and the other approaches and of course indigenously physical therapy methods. When you talk about a manual therapy application for pulmonary dysfunction, so pulmo manual therapy, okay, and then we continued on with extending the application of neuro manual therapy for stroke rehabilitation, and of course the latest one what we have is the cranial nerves neuro manual therapy. So name it, it is already there in AOMPT. Think of it, it is already going on in the AOMPT. Okay. So we are futuristically uh, evolving the courses, there has been updation of uh, the content, those who have done the courses one year before and versus now, they know the difference in the content. Those who have completed the CSMT, the spinal manual therapy, they know the value when they did the certified cervical spine specialist course. When the word specialist comes, we should remember the fact that we should not make the mistakes of the physicians, they become specialized and they forget the basic uh, differentiations but here the specialist involves right from specializing from the base from pathoanatomy in palpation and diagnosis pathomechanics in evaluation and then of course the examination based treatment okay so it's very very important and of course we are not treating the dysfunction just like that we are treating the patient okay so what is called as the biopsychosocial approach that is the last the what is called as the i can say uh, the packing okay the material when it comes to the individualized application of manual therapy for functional recovery treating patients in functional positions people who are having problem with squatting should be treated for squatting right from day one functional neuromuscular stability training an approach which is beyond the PNF and the dynamic neuromuscular stabilizations. Every approach has been improvised and every approach has been extended to improve the clinical application. So now we are having this very shortly, the course that is scheduled from today and also till 20th September during the World Physical Therapy Eve, before and after that, is the certified lumbar spine specialist course so you have 20 master classes a one master class one hour master class on pathomechanics or differential diagnosis another one hour for the exclusively manual therapy practical demonstration for different lumbar spine disorders uh, the first day is the diagnosis and then it goes on to every disorder like spondylosis radiculopathy we have uh, stenosis uh, instability, myofascial pain syndromes, facet joint syndromes, we have developmental problems or uh, like for example we have the sacralization, lumbarization or the limbland discrepancy and scoliosis, how all it can influence and lead to a low back pain and of course the neural component because um, uh, the mechanosensitivity itself can be a part of the low back pain and of course the structural pathologies ligament strains, sprains, every type of uh, injury or inflammations. Red flags, non-organic low back pain is also discussed in the master class and of course post-operative rehab. It's not just the manual techniques with the improvised techniques, it is also the use of cupping, especially the screw cupping which can actually modify the cupping pressure during the application of dynamic or functional cupping which is very very useful to biomechanically apply the cupping rather than using meridians okay. and the next part when it comes to the taping the rigid taping versus the kinesio taping and the beauty IASTM okay, how to use it for different layers of muscles and effectively ensure that adhesion muscle to muscle whether laterally or superficial to deep how are we able to attain our facilitate a release using the IASTM tools which is very important in lumbar of course. The pelvis, the dysfunctions of the pelvis, it's not actually the core uh, content of the lumbar spine specialist but however we will ensure that you are able to separate the pelvic dysfunctions and identify them 
uh, we have a separate course the pelvic uh, specialist okay so we are going to hold it shortly so there where you will be in depth you will be getting on the pelvic dysfunctions so when I am launching this course I thought that I should launch it with um, an initiation of the thinking process okay the first thing yeah, pardon the technical interruption so thinking process when it changes we make better decisions and uh, to evolve our thinking process it has been always like because of asking questions so that's the reason today I came live here on Facebook so I'll wait for every one of you to come join back because there was a big interruption but it was a very rather uh, pleasant interruption I was waiting ideally for a very very important uh, thing to actually arrive um, because uh, before launching the course I thought that it will be very helpful if we could have this so it came right now and it shows the beauty of the spine and the pelvis okay so it's a very very useful uh, um, handy um, teaching model uh, because we can hold it and we can easily show that okay on screen especially uh, for the hands-on treatments okay so the placements where is the facet okay and um, how is the nerve root the foramen the disc and the curvatures of the spine right from cervical to lumbar okay of course the pelvis which is the differential uh, part of the low back pain right the sacrum with the roots so it's a great surprise when I started the interactive uh, live session I was thinking of postponing I actually postponed it half an hour and I said it started at 5 30 because I was waiting for this then I thought that no start it and as we started things start happening okay so I'm just waiting for the participants to uh, all of you to start asking your questions uh, so that we can uh, go ahead with some kind of a fruitful interaction which will stimulate the thinking process and evolve better treatment methods and application uh, so that uh, you can empower yourself by uh, attending the certified lumbar spine specialist course the course begins from tomorrow so the diagnosis and then it goes on for until September 20 so it's a very important course uh, it's not just for the value of certification because AYMPT certificates are globally you know, everyone knows that this is AYMPT okay it's not just the black and white certificate okay and other thing is of course the value of the content that is provided and the accessibility of the content in terms of lifetime you can um, watch the videos and you can uh, uh, go for what is called as a ongoing learning okay so you have a patient you can come back watch the video or sit there only and watch the video for half an hour when the patient is uh, waiting or you are taking a treatment you feel it's unsure but you have a picture yes it is like radiating pain okay see the uh, video of lumbar radiculopathy get back to them remember it is the wish of the supreme power when you watch that video and you touch the patient the patient will improve because your sincerity and your passion to learn will direct you to AYMPT and when you are with AYMPT your destiny is walking towards you you are not walking towards the destiny okay so remember that and justify for being the best physical therapist the post lockdown when the patients are having a huge hope on the healthcare providers that we should recover back to full activity because this sedentary uh, lifestyle in the middle of this lockdown would have created a lot of musculoskeletal adaptations and when they start getting into normal life they will be having symptoms again they might have been symptom free during the lockdown they might think that even physiotherapy not needed okay but now when they are fully into the normal one when they are moving around symptoms would have started so they will come back to the physical therapist 
so make sure that you are prepared to ensure a better world through your better hands right so what i would request is and i also would appreciate is the participants asking me questions on low back pain i had announced in terms of you can ask questions be it a topic in your bpt you are studying or it's a syllabus topic which is there in npt how to approach a previous question uh, paper previous year something like that that's topic oriented discussions case oriented discussions you have a patient you have a experience of uh, evaluating and treating and you are not sure with some component of what you have done definitely you, are, you can ask that also you can ask it as a comment in the chat here right here on facebook and i will read it as i read it you will find the direction for your answers okay and the next of course is the research it's very important there's a lot of research if you see orthopedic research maximum research is published on low back pain especially physical therapy research uh, if you consider the physicians wise neurologists know the value of physical therapist orthopedicians know the value of physical therapist especially in people with low back pain a common man knows the value of physical therapist through the neck pain okay because the professionals and things the elderly they know the physical therapist because of the knee pain this is india so you have various pictures here okay so even if it's a lumbar radiculopathy orthopedician refers to the physical therapist for 3 to 4 weeks let's see and another mri then go for surgery of course surgery is controversial whether it's going to really uh, relieve the problem unless the problem is a red flag like malignancies infections okay or the cauda equina syndrome uh, so remember our visceral problems with uh, causing low back pain somatic and mechanical problems do not require surgery at all and also of course bed rest more than 3 days bed rest is not advisable at all until there is a fracture or dislocation so remember what were the myths what are the evolving practices i had mentioned about the list of techniques in the previous part of this uh, live session the lumbar spine specialist course will be a stamp on you as a physical therapist that makes you distinct from every single physical therapist in the world you might be thinking it's an academy located in india but this is the only academy active in online manual therapy education throughout the lockdown in india reported not by the local magazines it is by the journal of manual and manipulative therapy yes of course i am associate editor for the journal and uh, we know the futuristic evolution of knowledge what aspect the low back pain is going on so we can develop better techniques okay um so do not uh, what is called as have a second thought okay the lumbar spine specialist course is the course of your life if you are an orthopedic physical therapist or if you are a physical therapist if you have a clinic you have an outpatient practice you will get definitely five patients of low back pain in a day so you do this course you will be justified as the best physical therapist okay um shilpi is saying hello okay but what's important is the question okay uh, so you just put your question type your question let's the let the interaction begin right <clears throat> go ahead with your questions just type them and i always tell um when it comes to questions there is no right or wrong questions okay it is only the answers which can be right or wrong question can never be right or wrong a question is always the best thing it is only because of questioning the improvisation of knowledge has happened such phenomenal extent all around the world so every thought is a question okay so we should go ahead and see that you know and if you don't have questions on low back pain it means that 
you are not a physical therapist who is aiming at betterment of yourself or betterment of your patients okay uh, because when you get better is when you are competing with yourself okay i was like that yesterday and i am today so you get better comparing your to yourself and competing with yourself the patients get better when you are updated with the developments the latest research evidence and of course the mindset the human touch to understand a person with suffering rather than a low back pain which is coming as a person okay it is the person who is coming with the low back pain okay and of course uh, the investigations is another thing an mri for example patients might be showing you the mri see the mri see the mri you can look at the mri for patient satisfaction but please don't see the mri and treat the patient because it actually becomes treating the mri more than the treating the patient okay first evaluate the patient then if it is uncertainties correlate with the mri we have the first ever question from our dr ritu our core committee member of aompt patient is having knee replacement after that low back pain started this is a common thing okay with the stiff knee okay if the range of motion is less the patient is going to walk with extended knee okay i am telling you the biomechanical one because we don't know the picture of the patient whether it is intermittent pain constant pain immediate post op when the patient was lying down only pain increased okay um, or it is later after uh, one month okay so then the low back pain came after patient started walking okay i am assuming that functionally so i am telling in terms of functional so patient started walking with stiff knee remember that the knee uh, does the largest part of shock absorption when it comes to walking the level ground walking itself compared to hip and ankle so if the knee is stiff knee the, there is no flexion extension that much lesser definitely it is going to load the higher structures of pelvis and the low back pain the ground reaction force is going to go to the uh, lumbar spine so patients are likely to develop the myofascial low back pain most common and also of course the stenosis which can come as an intermittent claudication okay because of um, canal narrowing okay so these are all aspects which can come uh, in uh, total knee replacement i am not going to the surgery in terms of epidural uh, anesthesia was given and uh, dura mater irritation because of the needle so it's a neural low back pain or the what is called as injury okay to the nerve root leading to radiculopathy or cardiopena syndromes okay can you explain dr darshana or uh, uh, the beloved general secretary okay can you please explain the most important and relevant aspects of evaluation mm -hmm. i would say first is the mechanism so central mechanism versus peripheral mechanism because if you see low back pain central sensitization is most common in a musculoskeletal disorder means it is the chronic low back pain not only chronic chronic is just only tells the mechanism not the duration okay so central mechanisms definitely have to be identified people have experiences with multiple therapists footballing of therapy um so they have lot of previous experiences um attitudes beliefs uh, fear avoidance they will not bend forward okay so their kinesiophobia so central mechanism and peripheral mechanism so that will be the major thing of course the next level will come to structural and functional but my priority will go to functional uh because patient will uh, come to us only when functional activity is affected the patient who is telling bending uh, standing and bending forward i am getting back pain in the bent position when i am working okay uh, it means that lumbar spine flexion on the sacrum okay so that is pain whereas another patient who tells that uh, the uh, lower limb activities is bringing the low back pain okay so that means it is through the pelvis or from the sacrum Uh, the low back pain is coming so it is like a different uh, aspects a sustained sitting like this in a chair 
it is flexion of lumbar spine through the pelvis okay lumbar spine is not flexing uh, from the what is called as the actual spine the proximal line okay so if i am bending forward then the lumbar spine flexes if i am just sitting and i am standing my lumbar spine changes in curvature because of the influence of the lower limb okay the sit to stand and stand to sit so these functional aspects should be incorporated in treatment and evaluation functionally how the curvatures are changing how the tilt is changing okay during the functional transitions um, in the functional transitions can you do a, a snags or nags okay for the mulligans uh, mobilization with movements so which can and also functional neuromuscular stability training for muscles in the functional also you can add the neuromanual therapy so you can have all these three components to be tested as part of sit to stand or a squatting or uh, even walking on a treadmill okay if you are performing the claudication test structural test comes with the palpation and their clinical um, what is called as a functional anatomy okay so you have to activate those structures so if you are palpating a muscle i should activate the muscle if i am palpating a nerve i should move a joint which is far away from that area like i am palpating at lumbar spine also for the lumbar nerve roots i should move the a knee flexion because prone knee bend l2 3 4 okay l5 s1 if i am palpating definitely i will do the ankle dorsiflexion okay so nerve palpation um, so articular palpations the landmarks are there which joint where to palpate exactly and how to palpate them dynamic palpation during the movements okay how the joint is opening closing all that so the structural examination comes last in the middle the functional exam ex evaluation comes above that is the mechanism based evaluation if you find an unpredictable picture here structure to function interrelationship not there and mechanism it's a combination of mechanisms then you come into the biopsychosocial model where non specific interventions like aerobic exercise prescription okay if patient telling that sitting and causing low back pain means ask them to do cycling they will definitely feel better with sitting endurance okay because we are improving the aerobic conditioning in the same position which provokes the low back pain okay so that's the example there okay dr sarat if there is pain in the lower back one side near psas what may be the clinical diagnosis swelling is also present uh, we usually think it is beside the psis if the symptom is there okay it is related to with the sacroiliac okay the position of the sacrum on the ilium or ilium on the sacrum okay this is what is the common thing that comes immediately because psis is in the middle of this um also l5 to the ilium there is ilio lumbar ligament so if there is a strain in that because of a hyperlordotic posture okay uh, there can be strain okay so in that so that uh, can also create pain at the psis okay the posterior superior iliac spine if there is swelling uh, that swelling first of all you should see whether there is pain okay the swelling is accompanied with warmth and pain okay you know that there is a tissue strain with inflammation it should be definitely ilio lumbar ligament okay it's not the dorsal sacroiliac ligament okay because they are all very strong so don't expect them to get kind of injuries like common ligaments but if the same is after pregnancy and it's uh, uh child birth or in the third trimester of the pregnancy if the pain is there you can expect the sacro dorsal sacroiliac ligaments itself okay to go for a strain because the ligament laxity is present um hormonal reasons okay so think of the picture that is there in the patient the physiological state and then you see if it's an athlete um uh, who's a running athlete or uh, hurdle jumping okay long jump Uh, where one lower limb will go for flexion another is in extension okay in a very repetitive manner and then landing on um in any kind of athletes and sports definitely you can expect a dysfunction of the ilium on the sacrum okay so sacroiliac dysfunctions the swelling may be just apparent if pain is not there 
it is just because of the abnormal position you feel like swelling okay because of prominence of the PA, PSIS posteriorly we will find that the skin will be like elevated just below the PSIS okay and medially you will feel like elevation and when you press that it will look like it is having some soft tissue inside that it's not the swelling it is actually just observable swelling but not a palpable swelling okay sometimes even ligament hypertrophy comes in patients with ankylosing spondylitis they get a hypertrophy of the sacroiliac ligaments which will behave like swelling that I will assume in a young uh, boy adolescent boy who is having morning stiffness okay and you see that one side there is like swelling okay so you have to adapt to the associated history okay uh, the goal is functional okay so that's important yes Dr. Ritu uh, of course Dr. Siddiq our expert panel member I had a case of sciotic uh, scoliosis with LBP where we gave pain education and tailored exercise program paper got accepted um, as you mentioned in our conference also these case studies are basis of conducting RCTs or case control studies yeah see for example this one particular case what uh, Dr. Siddiq has treated may not be the case which will come every day for everyone but it gives us an idea that when the clinical presentation goes off the track okay unpredictable situation okay somewhere it goes how the therapist handle that situation so the basis and the principles behind individualizing like tailored exercises for example okay so based on muscle flexibility or the endurance deficits so people um, relate the muscle imbalance to the skeletal um, deviations okay and both of them should be related to the functional impairment okay so then only treated so and the patient has improved means it motivates the other clinician to actually go for the atypical cases in RCTs and case control studies the problem is we are matching the groups in RCTs we are matching the groups for comparing treatments in case control studies we are matching the groups for comparing the risk factors okay or what is called as the association uh, factors okay which lead to the low back pain uh, if it's like smoking whether it leads to low back pain or it's related to low back pain so there's a group with who are smokers group who are non-smokers among that we see in the smoker group whether low back pain how many are there non-low back pain how many are there in the non-smokers how many low back pain how many non-low back pain okay so we see that more people with smokers are having more low back pain compared to non-smokers non-low back pain that is also more okay so that means we can say a high association between smoking and low back pain okay because uh, smoking and cancer also smokers maximum people should get cancer or in cancer maximum people should be smokers then only we can tell both are related and if I am a non-smoker I should not have the cancer okay so that is also should be true right so that is the case control studies um, case studies are important because they provide practice based evidence case studies are important because as a clinician it's easy for you to do as case documentation you are doing same thing you can just adapt it as a manuscript case studies are important because it improves your clinical skill okay RCTs don't improve your clinical skill RCTs actually make you a machine okay to apply the treatment only that dosage only this technique then after that that technique then after that this technique come on it's not reality okay so case studies are always the best uh, we should congratulate the authors and the team um, led by Dr. Siddiq for publishing case studies uh, like such articles. Okay. So, sir is adding on with uh, participants must know there are a lot of myths associated with low back pain as opposite to research or evidence. Yeah. And uh, even physical therapists, we all listen to these myths, we all watch this. But still, we get into the same shell of thinking process, we start uh, you know, getting into our old habits and uh, you feel warmth in the lumbar spine you keep a cold pack okay so the moment there is radiating pain keep an uh, interferential therapy okay so that's not the way to go mm -hmm. so what's important here is to realize 
the role that we play okay um is definitely much bigger okay when your knowledge is good uh, you should not complicate your thinking process okay you should be very strategic when it is predictable you should go for clinical pattern recognition okay so what is the pattern whether it is facet joint syndrome whether it is myofascial pain syndrome whether it is a radicular pain syndromes okay or dorsal ramus syndromes or is it a lysthesis or just a clinical instability if it is stenosis then central stenosis or the foraminal lateral stenosis so think of pattern recognition when the predictable uh, progression in clinical history to examination to ongoing reevaluation during treatment is very predictable and matching what maitland quoted as make features fit okay if it fits then it's the clinical pattern recognition if it does not fit get into the mechanical low back pain non specific one in the non specific one go to the mechanism based model then go to the functional you have done justice okay you don't have to go into the structural aspects uh, unless you have uh, actually addressed both this and you finally find that the patient is telling that when i am pressing my back i am getting pain okay this is what they tell otherwise i am not having pain okay this is commonly happens in clinical practice okay then as a therapist you have that intuition to tell don't keep pressing okay come on it is because of a structural dysfunction and that structure is getting elicited on pressure okay so you need to treat that structure you can do the release of the structure you can do mobilization of the facet joint if it is joint um, so the release also i said you can use various tools cupping iastm or you can use facio muscular release with active forces so the gone are the days when you thought low back pain is going to be managed only with this or that okay now it is always a multimodal treatment which is having the best evidence earlier when people used to tell manual therapy is a blind treatment you don't know what is going on okay uh, it's unpredictable but now cochrane systematic reviews are telling manipulation and mobilization for low back pain with moderate level of evidence that means till the uh, intermediate phase okay however the long term recovery depends upon the active and the functional based regimes exercise regimes okay dr sadik yeah kindly mention about biomechanical model basically the biomechanical model is movement wise okay one is first uh, at first one it is the statics and the dynamics okay when you when i am talking about non specific low back pain or mechanical low back pain non specific low back pain is a diagnosis of exclusion you don't have other disorders so you term it as non specific or you have combination of radiculopathy and disc degeneration okay then definitely you can tell it as a non specific one okay with my facial pain okay so there are a lot of things or your lumbar pain with uh, sacroiliac dysfunction together you will tell it as non specific but mechanical low back pain is another sub group of the low non specific low back pain where you have the influence of static and dynamic mechanics means static and dynamic so static is posture position okay where you are talking about uh, stability with respect to equilibrium okay normal sitting i am getting a back pain versus i am traveling in the sitting position and i am getting a back pain is different because normal sitting is static sitting whereas traveling okay all this perturbations it is dynamic sitting although it is static there is a dynamic component in that okay it's like dynamic stability in the static posture because of the perturbations so the same way when it comes to dynamics movements in the movements we cannot have movements without the role of muscles so we consider in terms of kinetics and kinematics kinetics in terms of muscle forces in the statics also the dynamic stability definitely requires the muscle activity um, so here also we have the dynamic stability which will require the muscle activity from stabilizers and the mobilizers for the movements 
but in functional activities the muscle activity comes as a kinetic chain okay so right from foot to the um, head so it's always important okay to see the kinetic part why because kinetic is the one which is actually the basis of kinematics we have to, we don't do passive movements okay of lumbar spine okay functionally it's only active only so kinetics is the fundamental in kinematics of course the muscles are working or trying to work they are not able they are not provided the best fulcrum by the joints or associated nerves are getting uh, uh, impinged or they are getting uh, loaded okay tension forces you might think of the mechanical the movement being restricted or excessive this kinetic component only is called as the control impairments by peter o'sullivan and the kinematic component only is called as the movement impairments of shirley sarman okay so the movement impairment syndromes in that we have the direction flexion extension lateral flexions and rotations so if i have a flexion rotation syndrome it is a alternative biomechanical term for a lumbar disc bulge with radiculopathies okay if i have an extension rotation syndrome it's an alternative term biomechanical term for the older term of facet joint syndromes so biomechanical model is actually a very very important uh, thinking process in physical therapist however uh, the phenomenal work of shirley sarman how much ever she published about extremities and spine and everything the global academic community did not accept that model because of a parallel central mechanisms okay so central sensitizations is a globally accepted model now okay no see plastic pain okay which even dr siddik highlighted that iasp's new terminology okay so it's it's important to recognize mechanism based classification always that is important in the uh, when we are coming into functional definitely the biomechanical model will come in structural it is only the anatomical um, what is called as the applied anatomical model okay so that will be the one who is giving me the request to join on the screen okay so dr siddik wanted to come on screen okay hmm so it's important that uh, the biopsychosocial model it's very tough to actually implement okay it's mainly because the multiple professionals that is involved uh, you have to equip yourself with the, the cognitive behavioral therapy rational emotive therapy okay uh, multiple motivational interviewing skills okay so a lot of things are needed the psychological aspects so that you can handle at the same time the social aspects in terms of maybe ergonomic or maybe in terms of uh, an interaction as a recreational activity all this okay it's again an occupational therapy perspective okay our physical therapy what has happened is we tend to narrow down uh, we become fully the biological or the biomechanical versus the biopsychosocial but research has compared the biomechanical or the biomedical biomedical approach means it is biomechanical and anatomical okay so it is uh, mechanics also anatomy also patho anatomical model that means structure wise okay and patho mechanical model means it is the mechanism the movements and the postures wise okay the mechanical low back pain behavioral model is the one which i told about non specific and aerobic exercise training pain physiology education all that so it is central sensitization cognitive affective the psychological psychosomatic non organic pain components fear avoidance all that okay even the sympathetically mediated pain all of them they respond to aerobic exercises okay non specific exercise so if the patient tells walking is paining okay make them to walk in the pool okay in the aquatic therapy you will find a world of difference okay or make them to walk backwards okay instead of walking forwards see whether how their pain is okay explore experiment report um reform and revolutionize okay so that should be the plan of action hmm? 
we have people like Dr. Chelaya Silva, uh, sir is another expert in spine uh, manual therapy. We need to interact, okay, we need to have a, what is called as a, the exchange of expertise, okay, because uh, this, this is not just a give and take, okay, it is just like, uh, it multiplies, okay, it, it exponentially improves, okay, just by interaction, okay. So I really appreciate the presence of this uh, senior clinicians and experts here and I also welcome the inputs more important okay, so that everyone gets the picture of um, the latest advances. Of course there are other treatments of course other than physiotherapy like osteopathy and chiropractic but remember their focus is purely the biomechanical okay? so that means one vertebra out of place with respect to the other vertebra structurally or static that is subluxation okay chiropractic in osteopathy you have this malalignment dynamic or functional okay extended and visceral somatic so visceral structures uh, compensating for the somatic problem or somatic low back pain coming as a compensation for visceral additions okay so adding and complicating the picture so that is osteopathy okay so these are different professions unless you are got a doctor of osteopathy doctor of chiropractic i don't advise a physical therapist calling themselves as i am an osteopath okay not even after msc osteopathy okay so you should do the doctor of osteopathy msc osteopathy is not recognized in all the countries okay so make sure that you get the adequate training to identify yourself as some other profession. When you are using another techniques, use it as a physical therapist. Okay, don't use as I am an osteopathic physical therapist or I am a chiropractic physical therapist. Okay, you are a physical therapist who is using chiropractic techniques because you got trained in chiropractic techniques. It's fine. Use the chiropractic as a technique. Do not lose yourself into chiropractic as a professional okay identifying that so that is very important right remember because mother is always mother stepmother is always stepmother huh? so physical therapy is the mother so it goes without saying whom you should give importance okay so these are all things because our students have to upgrade their skills okay they should see that why are we getting stuck the first thing is where the mystery of evaluation comes when a patient tells bending forward is I am having low back pain. We always tell on the first day that you come for three days you will become normal. In the first day after treatment the patient asks I am feeling half better, 50% better, can I bend? Why are we telling them that don't bend? Because we are not treating the forward bending. We are treating what is called as the muscles, we are treating the joints, we are treating the nerves, we are treating the mechanism, uh, but we are not treating that bending forward. So that is why the functional emphasis comes. Okay? If you attend a course of the AOMPT or you take the videos of cervical spine also, how the importance of functional evaluation and functional treatment, functional application of techniques to make sure that right from first day the functional activity is restored. Of course there will be pain. I am not telling we are doing magic here. Okay? Uh, but it will be like with activity pacing okay like for example uh, bending uh, for 30 minutes it was causing pain okay this was the particular intensity so I will tell you maybe you can bend for 15 minutes okay half you can definitely permit so get them be with the activity okay if bending is not there at least do the uh, sustained bending is not problem it's a problematic one do the intermittent one, no problem. Intermittent will not aggravate when sustained loading is the mechanism, pathomechanism. Intermittent bending will not aggravate the symptoms. So you should, uh, if you if you advise them against bending and wearing lumbar belts, there is no worse criminal than you to actually prepare the patient for surgery and even after surgery also patient will not have recovery. The failed back surgery syndrome is not because of the implants. It is because of central sensitization. Okay, so that's why recognizing the mechanism is important 
and then afterwards the functional recovery ensues automatically okay when you are talking of structural problems structurally it has to be treated but after addressing the levels of mechanisms and the functional impairments then treat um, if for example uh, giving a thrust manipulation you have a lot of contraindications you should see that the movement dysfunction should match with the restriction there okay if you have a facet joint lock and whether that movement restriction is actually related to that functional activity patients don't come to us because they have a leg length discrepancy okay so structural no when they walk they get low back pain so they come to us so it's always important that we should get back into advising them for the walking okay I'm not telling you be in a hurry, but what I'm trying to tell is don't promote disability, okay? Making them restricted from the activity and cause more and more deconditioning and uh, the fear mongering, okay? So I am getting a low back pain, three months I am taking treatment, okay? It might improve the business in uh, outpatient practice, okay? Because the same patient is just coming for months and months, but that's unethical. And it is absolutely, if you are the patient, you will feel like the end of the world. Okay. So that kind of a thing, if you have to give, why you have to have a degree? Okay. Uh, you can better be a layman on the road because they perform the thrust manipulation and people are getting immediately better. Right. You have seen that. The layman, the manipulators on the road, they give osteopathy and chiropractic actually. Even the naturopathy, the homeopath, the naturopathy and the other, uh, there are treatments in uh, Kerala where they do thrust manipulations. So, they are also causing improvement. There are thousands of patients waiting for them. Okay. Their philosophy is different. Utilization of herbal oils and all those things. Okay. If you want to do cupping, do cupping which is biomechanical which is in physical therapy domain rather than doing a meridian based cupping because you are not related to acupuncture acupuncture the chinese type or the western uh, the middle east one in terms of the hijama bloodlet what is the use of uh, letting out blood in a muscular problem you think that there are toxins so you have to remove that with the uh, what kind of hypothesis is done what is the evidence there for hijama okay it is hijacking the knowledge. Okay. So please be very sensitive enough to be sensible. Okay. And think of tomorrow if I am having low back pain and I want to go for treatment means how I would like to be treated. Okay. Not just because I am trained in a particular technique so I have to apply it on the patient. It is because the patient benefits with that technique. So that is the major thing. I may be a certified practitioner or not. Okay, what is important is certified consultant, clinician, certified human being who can take care of another human being better. That does not come with college, it does not come with degrees, it comes with the frame of mind. The frame of mind to keep improving yourself and the frame of mind to do your best for everyone around you. Okay, so with that closing comments, I'm happy to conclude the session. And wishing you all the very best and please I would again extend my warm welcome to all of you to join the certified lumbar spine specialist course. Contact me on WhatsApp and register for the course. Get all the 20 master classes, 10 pattern mechanics and the 10 clinical manual therapy master classes. Be part of this phenomenon. Be the best physical therapist. You can also get the videos of the previous uh, so many techniques and the courses which I mentioned throughout in this video. Name it, You, even case based techniques. You have a case of shoulder pain, um, you, have, you know the picture. So you just give the details of the patient and ask me. Okay, I need some videos so that I can better do something for this patient. We will customize the content and I will send you the videos for fees, okay, applicable fees, don't think that it's free, okay. And next thing is, unless you are treating the patient for free, okay, and of course, you are teaching, okay, so you are part of the AOMPD teaching team and you have helped everyone, 
um, to get better okay then you can get scholarships students can get scholarships and get free courses because of their uh, merit in the college and recommendation by the principals okay for their financial status otherwise you see that every course has a fee and that fee will be a worthy investment to transform your life okay so those videos will be given to match that clinical presentation and then you can come with ongoing discussions you can also have a tele rehab session with the patient and you and i am with the model here as i show it on the model you can do it on the patient there and we can have a live interaction right so we are revolutionizing the learning and the online platform has provided a huge opportunity thanks to the covid and its lockdown okay so i really appreciate the contribution of the core committee and the expert panel and the supporting team of the aompt for all the success that is due the credit goes to only to them right so welcome you all to the certified lumbar spine specialist course 1 to 20 september 2021 and 20 e certificates for the 20 master classes and of course the suffix certification clss you're getting intensive course materials lot of pdfs and you have all the videos of previous examination differential diagnosis and of course the manual therapy techniques okay so everything previous so big uh, set of course materials okay at least i think around 30 videos and 17 uh, pdfs for the course material pre course study materials so the course with the video recording lifetime access with the certifications it's worth it for your life okay so good luck to you all god bless you all stay smiling enjoy the evening get prepared to make the first step in the best direction towards being the best welcome you all